live up on there? Or not yet? No, this is waiting. Oh. Okay, so. Hello, everyone. There we go. Let's just move this around. It says offline still on the um, up top. That's strange, but I got people online talking to me. I have people in real life talking to me. I have Javier here. What's up, man? And I've got uh, Joshua. Hello, Joshua. Thank you for not missing any of uh, any of our live streams. You the man. Who else we got in the chat? Freddie L says, "Hey, high five." There you go, buddy. You can continue to give me high fives. Okay, and so uh, your system there, is it not on yet? It's the first live stream now without uh, Andrew D killing it. We have Mike D and said, did you realize that you have the same last initial as our previous employee? I did not. That's why we are uh, oh, hiring you. We only hire people with a <laughs> D first name. Uh, Nippon Imports loves you broski. Uh, okay, I love you too broski. Hello, how are you? I'm doing good. It's Monday morning. Monday morning here in Japan. And uh, Brothers of Mayhem, hello from Kentucky. What's up? Hello, Derek. Do you remember me from the last stream? <laughs> uh, I, I, don't, I don't really watch all of the comments, and so I'm going to say no to that. But uh, Andrew's not here. This is uh, actually our first day in the office without Andrew, who's been a big part of the company for the last... Uh, two and a half years that he has been working here and so it's kind of a kind of a big thing for us so instead of having Mike on the side or instead of having Andrew on the side we got Mike on the side here and he's flexing his muscles and looking handsome to my right you can't see him unless you go like this there's Mike put on your camera face ah yeah and Naoko's here as well, but she won't really be part of the chat or part of the hangout. Unless you want to be, Naoko. Uh, you can bake cookies for everyone if you want. <laughs> I'm still kind of waiting for somebody to bring in cookies. You know my aunt runs a company, and they always bake cookies for her. And they have a lot of money now. <laughs> I think those two things are related. I think the nicer you are to your boss, the more promotions that you get. Yeah, if you have the audio on there, it's going <laughs> to really throw me off. <laughs> All right, let's go back into the chat here and see what we got. Uh, good evening, Derek from Meme Dude. Malcolm Salem uh, Sal Salam says hello. Hi, Malcolm. Liam Irving says greetings from Canada. Nippon Import says Mike, 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 Mike. Uh, there's a, a type of popcorn in Japan, and the name of it is oh, Mike. Yeah. So do you like to eat Mike? I my popcorn. Was that, yeah. <laughs> is that the first thing that you bought when you came here? You're I actually like, did. I was like, well, I can't not buy that. <laughs> oh. Greetings from Chicago from Adam Ki I'm sorry, Adam Kishinov. Papa Guy says, yo, hello from Australia. That's cool. I'm sorry, Australia. We have Mike from New Zealand. This is going to be a mm. big rivalry here. Yarr. Yeah. Hey, Derek. Any plans to bring back the driving vlogs? Uh, I don't know. At this point, we're in, like incredibly busy, and I really need to flatten things out and get them working really well before I bring back or start any new projects. I've got other projects on the back burner, and they're just never going away, and so I need to do that before I bring back the driving vlogs. Uh, I do. Um, I do think that there's always opportunity to have fun things like that. And the driving ones are not too stressful for me to do because it's, it's basically using time for me just like it's dead time. I'm usually listening to podcasts or listening to music. Uh, got a new CD yesterday. Well, not a CD, it's digital download. But uh, for the last 10 years or so, I hadn't bought any new music. And so I uh, just listened to all of my high school music. And then recently, like the last two years or so, I've been wanting to get back into buying more albums. And so now that I have much more money than I did when I was in high school, um, I can buy those albums. Um, when when I was in high school, my uh, I lived with a single mom, four children, and she didn't she didn't work. Like we were basically 
uh, living off of welfare. We didn't have any money to buy things like CDs, and so I could get like two or three per year. And so it's very cool now to be able to buy CDs whenever I want. Uh, CD that I bought is, um, it's the new CD from uh, Mike Shinoda from Linkin Park, and it just came out at the beginning of this month. Oh, yeah. Have you listened to I it? Not, but now I want to. I didn't even know that it was available. I just went on uh, iTunes to go buy some new CDs, and I saw the new Gorillas one, and I was like, oh. I got to get that. Oh, yeah. uh, and I almost got that one, but then I saw the Mike Shinoda one. I, I didn't even listen to it. I just wanted to get it anyway because I like Linkin Park, and uh, it is pretty different. And it's like, so the the lead singer, or, or I guess one of the two lead singers of Linkin Park, as m many people know, committed suicide a little over a year ago now, and so this CD comes out as kind of a way for him to deal with the loss and the change of his life, sort of, and so a lot of the songs are rather somber in tone, but uh, it's probably a good thing to listen to if you're a fan. Mm, good morning from Erie, PA. What state is PA? Pennsylvania? I don't know. In PA, in Japanese, PA means parking area, like uh, Daikoku PA. It's sad, but smile, it will be better. I don't know what that means. He looks like Mike. He looks like a Mike. Have, do people ever tell you that, that you look like a Mike? I don't think so. I get people telling me that I look like Derek Whitbley. What's his last name? Derek Whitbley from Sum 41. Oh. I think I it, it might like. just be the hair. <laughs> But uh, for a while, he looked like um, he wasn't doing very well, and so it wasn't a good time for me to look like him. He seems to be doing better now. Hello from Mile High. Hmm. Yeah. I was thinking about Mile. Uh, he's probably in a plane somewhere. That's pretty sweet. I was thinking about the Mile High Club. Do you know about the Mile High Club, Mike? I, do. I was I was wondering how many people, if you were to like ask like a million people, how many people would be members of the Mile High Club as a percentage of the general population? What do you think? It's got to be pretty high. You think it's high? I think it's pretty high, yeah. i I, I got to think that it's pretty low because I think a lot of people want to do that, yeah, but maybe, I, don't, yeah. I don't think that the actual yeah, logistics of it come through. Yeah. And you could probably get in a lot of trouble for that too. Yeah, they don't want to do it. It depends on which country you're going to. Like, we're going to Hong Kong in July, sort of. We're just doing a layover there. If I were to become a member of the, <laughs> of the Mile High Club while I'm going to Hong Kong, they might arrest me. They might yeah. put me into a jail or something. I don't imagine anywhere I would be too happy with. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. I wonder what the percentage of people who get caught are and the people who, who get away with it. Uh, okay, so we're starting to get questions in here. That's good for uh, all you guys who are new to this video. This is the uh, website here at the bottom. Uh, it is um, auction.pacificghostjdm.com, and then you can come and put in your own auction numbers or choose your own vehicles. So just as a test, I'm going to show you here, Mazda RX-7, and uh, let's pick auctions. Uh, no, I don't want to do that. Let's pick 1992 and up so that we only get the FDs and then hit the search button. Keep in mind you can't show us USS cars because USS cars are copyright protected and so we can't put them onto the YouTubes. Obviously advertising is a big problem for them. And this, cool, this is a really nice looking RX-7 that we have here. A lot of the modified RX-7s tend to become really poor condition after they've been modified and after about 5 to 10 years of being in a modified state. But this one looks like it's really nice. It has the wheels that... Um, R34 GTR wheels? I know that there's an aftermarket wheel that looks very similar to the R34 GTRs, but I think that these ones are the official ones. I think the ones that look similar don't have a center cap, and then these ones have center caps removed. So. I think the aero kit looks good. I like the vents up here on the top of the fender. I think the rear spoiler fits with the orange color. I bought my son some orange shoes and now everything that is orange is cool and so he would love this car. He's only two years old and so it's the little things that matter. And he still doesn't understand his colors other than orange. He tells me everything is blue. Everything. What's this? What's this uh, piece of celery? What color is it? It's blue. Oh yeah? But you might want to think about that again. Uh, okay, auction sheet, and I'll go over questions and, and your guys' picks in just a sec, so I'm just going to show you this one first. It's a 97 type RB. RB is the lower power version, the RS is the higher power version, 
Some people don't uh, know that there are two versions of power. 1300 cc color changed. Obviously, they never came original with this color. Love that exhaust. And RX-7 sound so nice. Octorade R, interior D, exterior C. Mike? Yes? I only have 240 milliliters of water. Could you get me some new water? Yeah. I'm going to need it. My mouth is already dry. Uh, purchase from user, aftermarket Navi, adjustable suspension, bride semi-bucket seat, aftermarket exhaust, aftermarket steering wheel, and rear seats have been removed and a roll cage has been put inside. A uh, quick note on the roll cage, a lot of people think that it's pretty sweet to have a roll cage in your car, and it is if you're intending to do racing, but the roll cage is also a way that you end up hitting your head and dying if you're in an accident, because a roll cage is meant to be padded for one, uh, but secondly to be in a car where you're wearing a helmet while you're driving. And so if you do have a roll cage in your car, and it's a street car, you might want to either take it out or wear a helmet everywhere that you go. And think about how cool everyone's going to think that you are when you get out of your car at Walmart and you take your helmet off <laughs> of your cool orange RX-7. That would definitely be the first thing on their mind. Why is that guy wearing a helmet? And then you have to explain to everyone, well, you see, I've got a roll cage in my car. What's a roll cage? Oh, it uh, helps you with the structural integrity of your car and prevents the car from crushing <laughs> in an accident. Kind of a weird thing to have on a street car. Uh, and I think for a street car, you would get more of a negative because of the extra weight of it than you would from positive of the structural integrity. Hmm. Okay. So what do we got here? Pretty big accident damage. Left and right front frame section of it has been repaired. Left and right front inner panel replaced. Core support replaced. Um, I can't read this first piece here, but one of these um, cross members in the frame has been replaced. That seems to me like it would be a pretty big accident. Aftermarket air filter front fender's rear bumper has been removed. What? Oh, rear wiper has been removed. Pardon me. Rear bumper removed. Um, underside scratches and dents. Interior has various modifications to it. The emblems have been taken off. It has extra gauges inside the car and an oil leak. Price-wise, with 91,000 kilometers on it, uh, I don't know, 97? Maybe around a million yen, but I think that a lot of its price is going to come from the cool looks. And it looks like the body is in pretty good condition, taking a look at the body here, and so you wouldn't have to redo any paint or fix any dents or fix any scratches, which could be a problem on a car like this. Do, 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 do. Remember to uh, take down notes of the good questions. Yeah. Okay, so let's have a look here. We got. Do you want uh, car or question? Uh, if you got a question for me, we'll start with that, I guess. Um, might be good for anyone who's new. Mm -hmm. um, someone's asked how to pick auctions, so I can give you a car if you want. How to pick auctions? Yeah, I think he's asking how to search. Mm -hmm. Okay, well the search is pretty easy. You just start off by going to our website, auction.pacificcoastjdm.com, and anyone can use this. You don't have to be a member or anything. There's a guest account. In fact, I'm logged into the guest account here. Uh, the guest account and the regular accounts have really no differences other than being able to save your own picks if you want to like save one for for future looking um, which is right here you can save different searches so you don't have to put the information in here anymore pretty easy you pick which one that you like Toyota and I'm gonna see if I can find an old Celica because I used to own one I wonder if we've crashed the server Usually it doesn't take this long to search, but maybe we've got a million people looking at it, all trying to search at the same time right now. Let's try reloading. Here's one of the problems with this service is all of these auction tools are provided by like um, uh, service providers, and so you pay a monthly fee, and then you get to do, uh, you get to have this system, but it's all like the speed of it is all in the hands of the server owners and so we don't get any control over that and unfortunately you wouldn't be able to get one from a, from in Japan it would have to be one that's uh, in a, an outside country because they are borrowing data from Japanese sources and they don't want to have legal problems well that doesn't seem to be working and so uh, anyways it's really easy you just put in all the information that you want here and then you click search and then you go 
and that's the gist of it. In the meantime, someone has asked, uh, I guess, the basic process of importing into the USA. She's asked if any companies have imported. I don't know if she knows that we can import for them personally. Yeah, I'd say about 50% of our cars right now go to the USA because it's a burgeoning market. Ever since about three years ago, it's become very popular and a lot of people see the cars in, in, in the US and then are like, I want to get one of those and then find us on YouTube, I guess. Uh, that's our biggest source of people coming into our company and buying from us. We can ship to any country that you want as long as the cars are legal there. And so for the US, the car has to be 25 years old. And as long as the, 20, the car is 25 years old and you don't live in California or Hawaii, then you can import and register the car. <clears throat> you can import the cars into California. You can use them as race cars if you want, or you can pass. You can comply them to be emissions, like proper for emissions. But the cost can be extremely expensive, usually in the in the range of about ten thousand dollars. And we don't specialize in that. So generally speaking, we don't sell to very many customers in California. Um, the process is pretty easy. You pick the cars that you want to bid on, then you send in a translation request. We translate all of this for you, and then you decide which cars that you want to bid on and how much you want to bid. And then the bidding is pretty simple. It's very similar to eBay, except for the auction takes place in a matter of seconds. It's like 5 to 15 seconds most of the time. And so if your max bid is a million yen, or about $8,000, then we'll, um, when your bid comes up, we click the mouse, Click, 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 until there's no other bidders, and then you win or you lose. And uh, you can bid on as many cars as, as you want, but you can only win one car per security deposit that you send in. And the reason why we want a security deposit is because we don't want people to be bidding on cars and then not paying for the cars. And even people who put in a security deposit, it happens enough of the time that it's a pain in the butt for us, because if we win the car, we have to take the car. And if you don't pay for it, then we pay for it. And that's pretty annoying when you're trying not to go out of business, so to say. Okay, so uh, I, I think that the process is pretty simple. There are a lot of uh, small details that you need to know about. Importing is generally pretty easy. For the US, we set you up with a customs broker that does all the filing for EPA and DOT, and we, we finish the ISF form for you. And if this doesn't make sense, it doesn't matter. You, it's all stuff that other people are handling for you. And so it's a, it's a pretty simple process. People who have anxiety disorders maybe don't do it, but otherwise you uh, you should be fine. Um, and then we can answer any of your questions that you have over email. Is your picks working? Yeah, let's see. We got a car. Yeah, I saw there was a Daihatsu in there. A Mira. It looks pretty sweet. Anyway, what you got for me? Uh, Where did the Mira go? I had the Mira. Second. I got it right here. If we want to take a look, it's yeah, sent yeah, in by Bill one. Courtney. Yeah. I wonder, Bill, do you have a job or do you just, uh, are you retired and just watch our videos every week? Oh, I don't, I can't find that one. Maybe I got that number in wrong? Um, yeah. 95015. That's the one, yeah. That's weird, it's not coming up. Oh, it might have some of your previous. Oh, I think I know what the problem is. I put in Toyota. And Daihatsu is not Toyota, even though it kind of is. Daihatsu is majority owned by Toyota, I believe. Okay, that's a pretty sweet little car. K car, turbocharged. I think these are four cylinders. Whereas most K cars that are sports cars are three cylinder Suzuki engines. Cool speakers in the back. K cars can be pretty fast, especially on tight roads, but they're definitely not fast in drag racing because uh, the requirement is 660cc. Uh, this one is a no-claim car, and so they didn't get an inspection on it, which leads me to believe it's not one that you're going to want to bid on. You don't know anything about the car except for what you can see in these pictures. It looks pretty sweet. I do like the white wheels, the original white wheels on it. But... Uh, could have a blown engine, could have flood to damage, could have anything. That's a nasty CD player. <laughs> okay, so 114, 483 kilometers on that. Looks like this is an automatic transmission. Uh, kind of weird to have the sports car version. The TRXX is the sports car version of the Mira. And uh, automatic transmission with a sports engine is kind of a dumb idea for a small car like this. Like, if you have a bigger engine and better power-to-weight ratio, then an automatic transmission doesn't matter that much. But for a small car, it absolutely does. I don't think it would be very fun to drive. 
maybe 50,000 yen for this because nobody knows the condition that it's in. Cool car though, thanks for sending that in, Bill. Okay, is your sh are you sure your son isn't colorblind, says Vic? I'm actually colorblind, which is a little bit weird. I'm going to post a video like Logan Paul did. Mike, do you know about the Logan Paul video? I don't the colorblindness? No. I, I haven't actually seen the video. I've just seen people making fun of it because, like, apparently he has, like, eye surgery or something, and he's like, I'm seeing colors for the first time. It's so emotional. Are you actually but, colorblind? Yeah, but, like, people who are actually colorblind, it depends. Like, yeah, there are some depends. people who are more than others. Yeah. And so, for me, it's no inconvenience. It's just funny. All oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> and so, my wife likes making fun of me, and that's the only inconvenience <laughs> to my life. Because of my color blindness. It's the onslaught of insults. So, you know, for for color blind, they have these things where there's like a circle of dots, right? And you're supposed to read what number is in that circle. Do you know about that? No. It's like a test for color blindness. So when we were a kid, we had this book, and it, it's like, are you color blind? Which number do you see? The answers are in the back. And my sister used to get really mad at me because I couldn't read the colors, and she's like, you're just pretending that you. <laughs> And I'm like, I, I, I think I see a 7 there. She's like, it's a 12. <laughs> uh, is this K-Hot Rod as cool as it seems? Uh, is what Bill said about that one. Can't do USS Yokohama cars, I think. You guys can take a look at them if you want. And so feel free to share them. And uh, anyone who's watching this video can go take a look at the 30262 at USS Yokohama. But we can't show them on the video because there is another exporter in the Nagoya area who doesn't like us very much and then tried to get our auction license taken away because we showed some of their cars on a YouTube video. And so we had a meeting at USS and they said, no, you can't do that. And I said, okay, I don't want to have my license taken away, so I won't do that. I hear the Gran Turismo song whenever I look at Daihatsu models. I can't even remember the Gran Turismo songs. Um, this person here, uh, Tristan, gave us a Nissan Sunny truck with a number on there, but you're going to have to tell us which auction it is because a 62214 might be at multiple different auctions. And if it is at a USS auction, then we're not going to take a look at that. And that's at USS yeah. Yokohama, so we can't. Get off the screen, quick! Derek, I'm self-employed, working non-Japanese, workaholic hours, and a bachelor. Oh, yeah. I know what it's like to work stupid hours by being self-employed. Self um, try as hard as you can to not be married and not have three children if you're going to be working plenty of hours. Because for me, the last, like, our company is just about 10 years old now, and the last 10 years has been very difficult. The last two haven't been that bad. Okay, so we got a question. Or a pick. The only question I have is, Brandon keeps saying you're so dreamy. Brandon says that I'm dreamy. It's only by accident. If you see me <laughs> in real life, then it's not dreamy. When I come onto the video here, I actually do like uh, tape, <laughs> so you can't see the wrinkles. I got a pretty cool old uh, Isuzu. It's two three zero eight zero from J A A. Two uh, two three zero eight zero. I don't know very much about Azuzu, so we'll see how this goes. I've never seen this before. I know that these came with uh, 1600 CC. Am I, did I even get that right? Let's see. No, 1800. Uh, I think they came with 1600 CC twin cams and 1800 twin cams, but I'm not 100% sure. This one looks like kind of an older model. Yeah, that's the problem with Azuzu. They used to make some really cool cars back in the 70s, but. I just don't know an awful lot about them. Okay, so let's have a look. It's a, it's a 1971 Bellet 1800 GT. Mileage is unknown, most likely because it's yeah, five digits on the odometer. And so you don't know if that's rolled over because at 100,000 kilometers it would. It has uh, dealer history papers showing that in 2012 uh, it had 60,000 kilometers, in 2014 it had 59,000 kilometers, and so there, the gauges would have been changed at some time between those two. It has uh, history papers, owner's manual, and the trunk key. Interior dirty. Um, interior has various dirtiness in it. Exterior dense, paint wave, underside, um, corrosion, and has been painted. Fuel tank is dented. Headliner is saggy, left front inner panel bent, core support bent, 
front cross member, one part bent. You guys are going to know the kanji for bent really well. Here it is at the end of all of them. Trunk panel bent. Trunk floor has been pushed up and is bent. Uh, and then the dashboard is cracked. The body looks to be good, but an old 70s car has definitely experienced some rust in its life. So if the body is this clean, it's been re uh, repainted. Even though it hasn't been mentioned here, it probably has been. And most likely has some rust repair, at least at the very bottom sills here and around the rear wheel pocket. Uh, typically where cars will rust first. It looks like it has a really cool canvas sunroof on it. And it's a, I mean, it's a sweet car. Um, canvas top installed. So I guess that's not original. And front Recaro seat. Hmm, don't like a classic car with a modern seat in it. Still a cool car, though. Very unique looking dashboard. It's cool. My price guess is 1.8 million yen, or roughly around 15,000 US dollars. Hmm. All right. Jared Jung says, there's a Lancer wagon I'm looking at in BC. I'm in Ontario. Can I get your opinion on this? Dude's asking 15,000, no idea of condition. Would it be cheaper to import one? The only, uh, so Lancer wagon or Lancer Evolution wagon. You didn't mention it's an Evolution and you can't import the Evolution in Canada until I believe next year. Can you look that up for me, Mike? Uh, the, when one, the one he's searching for is a 2005. It's on the auctions if you want to take a look, but it's yeah, not important. I don't, I don't know when the Evo 9 started. I think it started in 2000, late 2004 or something like that. And so it wouldn't be uh, importable to Canada yet. Canada has a 15 year rule for that, but it might just be a regular Lancer wagon. And in that case, 15,000 is way too much for it. But 15,000 also seems too cheap for an Evo 9. Yeah. Like the Lancer wagons, nobody really wants them. Um, and so prices are like less than a thousand dollars for most of them import that to Canada and you can have one landed for around five thousand dollars and so that seems like it would be too much but without knowing the specifics I can't say uh, definitively most people who import cars are going to ask for some sort of a markup two thousand four thousand five thousand even ten thousand dollars markup on their cars depending on which make and model it is some people try to mark up the cars a lot and then it it turns out to be not worth it but on the other side, like a, an already landed car, you can get it right away. You can view the car in person yourself. And so there's less risk involved. And so less, less risk and immediate car, immediate satisfaction, higher price. And so there's some balance there. And so we don't really compete against people who are importing cars. Like if you're looking to buy one that's landed compared to us, it really depends on what's best for you. And it, Ooh, Fraser Valley Imports is here. I'm famous. I got famous people watching my stream. Hey, Ben, how you doing? Uh, I'm going to be in Canada pretty soon. Um, you know about that because I've been talking to you about it. But July 25th to August 8th, I will be in Canada. And I hope that I'm going to meet a lot of people while I'm there. What was I talking about, Mike? The evolution. started in 2005. Oh. Even nine wagons. Is there one to take a look at? Uh, there was, yeah. Uh, I, know, sorry. I think I deleted my tab. Evolution wagons are one of my all-time favorite cars. I think only like a, as far as station wagons go, maybe only an M5 station wagon beats it. And then the E34 version, not the newer version. It's 23213. Someone says, you, uh, I'm probably talking to someone else. What's that number again? 23213. Ooh, this is a good looking one too. I don't like the carbon wrap on the roof, but these look great in white. Yeah. Wow. Original wheels, original front bumper. I don't care for the aftermarket headlights so much. But Evo 9s just drive so nicely. And then station wagons are so cool. And then fast station wagon. I swear, every, every time that we shoot one of these videos, I want to take a look at one of these cars. I'm sorry if it gets boring to everyone else. Looks like it comes with a free bumper and steering wheel inside. Oh yeah, not down with this steering wheel. If I'm a drifter, I, I could go for the steering wheel, but not for a street car. I find that uh, when I'm, if, I, if I'm driving on the street, I don't want the steering wheel very close to me. Like they say when you're racing, you need like a 
90 degree angle in your in your arm here. There I am showing showing my muscles. <laughs> Uh, but when I'm driving, I like to have just a small bend in my arms like that. This is more comfortable for me. I don't want it to be right up against my chest. So Evo 9s with a 6-speed, uh, you're looking at usually around like uh, 800,000 yen to like 1.6 million, uh, which is about $7,000 to uh, $15,000, if I can do math in my head. Uh, and then the automatic ones are about half the price of that, even less than that. You can get one for, for fairly cheap. Somebody says, WTF would the Japanese want an X-Trail for? Mm, maybe you don't know. The X-Trail in Japan can come with an SR20 VET engine. 280 horsepower turbocharged, four-wheel drive, stronger axles than the international version of the X-Trail. And the VET is a variable valve timing version of it. So it came out right when the S15 died. And so it's a better engine than the SR20 that came in the S15. And it's kind of... My thought is that they made that engine for the S16, which they then cancelled, and then they said, we have this finished engine, and so what should we do with it? And then just thought, the only car that we can put it in is this X-Trail, because it's mm. the only one that shares the same engine platform. And so it is kind of a weird little thing, the X-Trail GT. Very cool. And so if it is the GT version of it, and they're selling it for 11000 maybe that's reasonable, because SR20 and an X-Trail is very cool. <laughs> intercooled turbo x-trail okay what are we going to go for next uh, we've got a pretty cool on the beat uh no i don't Otherwise know I've got a how beats are cool I'm, I'm kind of looking for the freezer freezer valley one because he sent in one oh, right. and uh since i know him personally i'm going to give him priority there you go my arrive stage yeah okay 6082 6082. Probably a question after that, so see if you can find something that you like. Ooh, the Accord Wagon looks good. Hmm. Okay, this is the final version of the Stagia, which is a station wagon, kind of a station wagon version of the Skyline chassis. And then the Skyline turn, like, in the U.S., you guys got the Skyline, kind of, as the G35 uh, Infinity, which is called the Skyline here in Japan, for those that don't know. And then at that generation, the Stagia, or the Skyline and the Stagia both changed over from RB to RB20, RB25, RB26 engines into a V6 configuration. And I think they used a v, VQ35 engine. And so the Stagia here is using that platform. It's a really good-looking car. You can get them front-wheel drive or rear-wheel drive very very good value for money and you can get them in turbo 2.5 liter i think so it's a vq 25 dett you can get them naturally aspirated or turbo but uh cool car it looks like the condition is pretty bad u3 a2 a3 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 airbag lamp is on left headlight bracket part is cracked uh, left front inner panel is dented. Right front power window doesn't work and rear wiper doesn't work. Still a cool looking car. And because of the fact that these are re relatively cheap vehicles and uh, this one's not in great condition, has kind of high mileage uh, for Japan at 115,976, I think that this one will probably sell for around 50,000 yen maybe. 50,000 yen would be around $400. And I know it seems a little bit weird to think that it's that cheap, but older cars in Japan are really not liked by the Japanese market. And so if the car is old, unless it has another market or another country that it's very popular in, the prices will be low. And stages were very popular when they first came out. They were very modern looking, and the stage name is fairly commonly known here in Japan. And so a lot of them sold when they were new. There are still a lot of them on the market, and so that leads to really cheap prices. And so you can import one of these to Canada for basically four four thousand dollars, sometimes less than that. Pretty sweet. On the topic of stages, <laughs> some of that, uh, what Koto has asked are the Altic stages rare? 
Um, they are, they're rarer than the regular stages for the Autech ones, but they're not so rare that they're hard to find. I think it's harder to find a five-speed version of the stage that's not the Autech version. Uh, the problem, though, is that they didn't make as many of the Autech versions as they did the GTR. And for those that don't know, the Autech version of the Stagia is the Skyline GTR station wagon. And so let's have a look at, let's see if we can find one right now. Uh, so Nissan and Stagia. A lot of people ask me how to how to pronounce the word Stagia. Um, that's the way that I'm saying it is the rough uh, way that a Japanese person would. 2001. And we don't have any of them up for auction today. Usually there are like two or three of them per week. Conditions are kind of so-so, probably better than your regular stages would be. But they look like this, except they have a big bumper on the front. And they are the running gear and the engine from the R33 Skyline GTR. And they're super sweet. Um, five speed manual, rear wheel drive, changing to four wheel drive when it loses traction. I don't think they ever came with a sunroof on them. That one's USS. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> don't mention everything if yeah. it's fine and cool you got a question for me by the way why don't we switch the do, subject yeah. here <laughs> um someone's asked if they've uh noticed more cars coming through non-uss auctions since they implemented implemented their old or their new policies draconian policy who is it that's asking that question clp okay clp yeah canada never had the evil wagon clp um Okay, so USS, USS is trying to lock down their data to be more secure with it for various reasons. Um, I, could, I think I can understand their reasons, but as an exporter and a purchaser from an exporter like us, it's very frustrating that they don't show the end prices of any of the cars that go through auction. Um, to the public and they lock that down unlike other auctions. They also don't show the end prices of negotiate sold cars and this leads to an ability for exporters to very easily scam people by telling the customer that they won the car for a certain price when actually they won the car for less and they're taking that difference and they're putting it in their pocket and they're going and buying boats and sports cars and everything else that rich douchebags buy. Um, really really frustrating for me and there's really nothing that we can do except for spread spread the idea that a lot of exporters are, are playing in this game and there's really no easy way to catch them and we've caught a number of exporters in the past for doing this and uh, like we have access to USS auctions but if the car goes as sold as a negotiate sold then we don't get access to that and so in the last few years they've been doing that they don't show high resolution pictures that's why all the USS like if you look in our auction tool here all the USS ones have tiny little pictures that are only four times as big as this and that's really frustrating and um, the question is did they are we seeing more cars at other auctions because of that I don't think so. I think we're seeing more cars at USS auctions because of that. Because you got to think that USS has two different customers. There's the buyers and the sellers. But to them, I believe that the fact is that the sellers are their more valuable customers. So if they can keep their sellers happy, naturally more buyers will come to them. And the way that they keep their sellers happy is not letting anyone see the sales price of their cars. And this is in particular really valuable for a seller that wants to sell their car with a high reserve price. And you'll notice USS auctions are naturally more expensive than other auctions. Part of the reason why is because USS has the best cars at it. And so if you're looking at USS, you'll see two different things. One, the car will probably be in better condition than in other auctions. Not always, but probably. And two, it'll probably sell for about 10 to 15% higher than other auctions. But if you're looking for a really great condition car, you're not going to have another option. And so it's a little bit of catch-22 there. But if the auction can keep their sellers happy, the buyers naturally have to go to the place where all the good cars are because the buyers also want to get the best cars. And so I think that these changes were 
um, an effort to get more cars to come to the USS auctions, and I think in that respect it's going to be very successful. USS is by far the biggest company in the auction group, like way by far 85 percent of our purchases come from uss auctions and so it is a little bit scary because i'm not sure if japan has as strict of laws as other countries like canada when it comes to anti-competition um or or the u.s like you can't have a company that is basically monopolistic because it's very bad for the uh for the basically everybody uh, especially the buyers but also the society and, and whatever else um, I'm a little bit concerned about that, but at the end of the day, USS is, we can't change things like that, so we can't let it determine our uh, choices in how we go forward, I think. We just have to keep doing what uh, we can and keep making decisions as they come up to us. Okay. Another card? Yeah, sure. The Land Cruiser, uh, 16038 from JAA. Do, 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 do. Got to reload the page. Sorry. One six zero three eight. We've been getting a lot of inquiries about Land Cruisers recently, like a lot. Pretty sweet off-road cars in the U.S. All the good Land Cruisers are in Japan, which is weird because the Land Cruisers aren't. Um, a typical vehicle that would be good for the tight streets of Japan. Uh, this one's only a pretend Land Cruiser, unless you own one of these, in, in which case you're a cool dude. Uh, the, the Prado version is like a toned down version of the Land Cruiser, and they have similar looks, but the Prado version isn't really a Land Cruiser. Um, I, I sound so mean saying that. It is a Land Cruiser by name, and it has its own chassis code. Uh, 70 series has Prado and regular one. They're pretty similar. The next generation of these is the 90 series, which doesn't share a chassis with a, a non-Land Cruiser. And basically the idea is sell these at a lower price point for somebody who wants to get into a Land Cruiser, but doesn't need the super top of the line, run for 30 to 35 years without giving you too much trouble type of Land Cruiser. And so what you get here is uh, the biggest difference is the smaller engine. Here we get a 1KZ uh, 3 liter turbo diesel engine, the same one that's in um, Hilux, Hiace, um, can't think of anything else. B basically it's the Hiace van engine. It's a good engine. Um, it's aluminum head, which is a little bit weird, but uh, generally speaking, they can run to pretty high mileage without issues. Some people have had coolant issues with them, but mm, I don't really see them as much as the 2L or 3L engines. And you get more power and more refinement out of this than the older Toyota diesel engines, but not like the inline six-cylinder uh, Land Cruiser engines. 209,554 kilometers. Oh, and these sell for roughly about two to three thousand dollars less than a typical Land Cruiser. And a typical Land Cruiser 70 series is about, like, I suppose a, a landed fee would be about ten thousand to fifteen thousand dollars for them. So they're still big money because they're awesome. And there's, I mean, when you get to a car that's the best in its category, it's okay to spend a lot of money on it because you got the best one. You got. Everyone else around the world wants to make SUVs that are awesome, but only Land Cruiser does. Um, purchased from user, aftermarket wheels and suspension. This one has a small lift in it. The knobbly tires look awesome. And these tires are pretty comfortable. These are a uh, BF Goodrich um, all-terrain TA, and they're a good combination of uh, uh, traction off-road and comfort on-road. Core support, one part is dented, exterior has one part paint uneven. Color change to black, that's kind of a big deal for me, I don't want one that's color changed. Seat cigarette burn and repair marks from that, interior has screw holes in it, steering wheel wear, and interior liner cigarette burn. It also has pretty bad corrosion here and here and here. Price wise, I think we would see this one go for a very low price because of the corrosion and the kind of higher mileage and the fact that it's an, an automatic, not a five speed. I think we'll probably see around 600,000 to 700,000 yen or around 5,000 to 6,000 dollars. Aren't Land Cruisers notorious for having engine issues? Not as far as I've seen. Um, we have had 
We've probably exported about 100 Land Cruisers and only maybe two head gasket problems. Uh, oil leak is really common on them, but I wouldn't call that a, a, a super bad. Oh, Land Rovers? I'm <laughs> uh, I'm not. I, I should get out of your guys' conversation there. We sell a lot of Land Rovers too, and Land Rovers kick some serious butt. If there's ever an SUV to come up against the Land Cruiser, it's the Defender. But Land Cruiser is a better vehicle. Defender is a way cooler image though. Way cooler. But just worse to drive, worse on fuel economy, and has bad <laughs> build quality. Yeah, and Rust is probably even worse than the Land Cruiser, and I don't know if that's even possible. CLP says, I skipped buying from USS because of the SHIT pictures and fishy stuff like same cars I was looking at being sold multiple times at very different inspection sheets the same week. Okay, got a couple of questions there. Uh, we already went over the, the poo-poo pictures. Um, nothing we can really do about that, but I do want to mention that the pictures of the cars, no matter how good these are, like these are really good pictures of the cars, but... The pictures hide everything like dents and scratches and bad finish and a picture can look really good at this distance and then the car can look really bad. And so it's a very bad idea to judge uh, the condition of the car based on the pictures. You really have to look at the sheet and then you get basically the same information from a USS auction than you do from any other auctions when it comes to looking at the sheet. And if you get good at reading the sheet, you don't even have to look at the pictures of the car except for looking at like what wheels it has or those sorts of things. Condition-wise, the pictures don't help you that much. They do for the interior, but we don't have any inter interior pictures here to show you. Um, and then the other question there was um, cars being sold multiple times. So previously in the stream, I said that USS auctions um, are generally more expensive, and so typically what you'll see, and you can do this yourself if you want, there's a little button here, has this car been an auction before? And if you click on this, you can see a list of any other time in the last three months the car's been at auction. And so what people do is they buy cars from cheap auctions and then send them to the USS auctions to go resell for profit. And it's pretty popular to do that, especially with older cars 15 to 30 years old, because there's a really good chance that the market just won't have enough buyers for that specific vehicle for it to sell for a high price at a smaller auction. The smaller auctions typically have dealers that don't really know the international market that well as the sellers and so you can buy a cheap car there and then you can sell it at USS within a week you can make 700 to multiple thousands of dollars and so USS has a lot of that simply because they have the higher prices but then uh, excluding that one auction because you think that um, you don't like those two things removes an awful lot of good cars out of your poten potential buying and so I don't think that would be a a strategy that would result in getting um, good cars but that said it it depends on what type of cars that you're looking after if you can find the cars that you like at smaller auctions like if you're looking for non-common cars like for example um, a crown or an estima or a step wagon or minivans the smaller auctions are definitely the way to go oh Celica oh I'm gonna have to check that out 2054. Oh, RS4. Hmm, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys want to see a car be bought on stream? <laughs> Uh, we're not actually, we may be allowed to do that with some auctions. I don't know. Oh, wow. I'm afraid if we did that once, we would yeah. have that Nagoya exporter yeah. come and <laughs> shout us down. Oh man, do I ever love this car. Oh, and as, as a kid, I used to really like the fastback version. So from 72, this is the second year, this is a 73. 72 is the first year and they came in a notchback style. And then I think 74 or 75, you can buy either of them, the notchback or the fastback. And I used to think the fastback was a cooler looking car, but now that I'm old enough, uh, I think my tastes have changed and I much prefer this styling to the fastback version. Oh, it looks clean. Hmm, fender mirrors. Oh, hood vents. You're going to have to take me out of the room for a few minutes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so these cars are old cars now. Prices have gone up steadily over the last little while. If you buy one, you're not going to lose any money on it if you own it for a number of years, as long as you keep it in pretty good condition and you don't crash it. Um, they're fun cars. They came with a really awesome engine in Japan compared to um, 
in the States. In the US, they got an 18RC engine, which is a uh, downdraft carbureted, single carburetor, 1.8 liter, basically truck engine, high torque, low power, um, low RPM. In Japan, you got quite the opposite. It was a, basically a racing engine. It was a 2T, 2TG, I think, in this one. It was for the 1600, and then you can get them with the 1800-18RG. And their twin side draft, um, 1600 cc, but still put out 110 horsepower back in the 70s. It was a really hot car. And because it wasn't in the US, you got the nice trim bumpers. So you don't have, didn't have to put up with the uh, bumpers that didn't really help you with the crash safety, but added a lot of weight and bad looks. So body has a little bit of rust, but a car this old, what car doesn't? Um, it says mileage is unknown on it doesn't have a C front inner panel dented core support replaced headliner has been removed <coughs> rear seats have been removed good luck finding those if you want them uh, end panel U1 so a small dent on the end panel that's underneath here underneath the bumper and the bumper doesn't really protect very much does it kind of weird I, I guess bumpers were basically just a styling thing back then because who cares if somebody dies in a car accident um, Undersized surface rust, full repaint, has a roll cage in it. Definitely not going to buy this car for myself. I can't afford one. These are like 1.6 million to 3 million now. And I remember when, like when I started exporting, you can get them for like 400,000 yen. Uh, modification, this car is a modified car, which in Japan is weird. It actually goes on the registration when you modify a car in certain ways. And aftermarket wheels that look really nice and I like how they didn't slam it down I mean I like the look of slammed down 70s cars I think they look sweet and fender flares and all that but I also like the the original look of having tires that are not too big especially on a car that doesn't have power steering I think these don't have power steering nope hmm. cool car and uh, this one I'd say that this one's probably uh, in the range of Celicas, this is probably a 7 out of 10. And so I'll say probably about 1.6 million, so probably about $14,000. Somebody asking for an Alteza. Recently, the Alteza has gotten more popular, I think. I wonder why that is. Hmm. Got a question for me? Uh... We got eight more minutes on the stream. Eight more minutes. This is your warning. Otherwise, you're going to have to watch us again next week. People were asking about the prices of cars. Mm -hmm. um, one that came up was the R33 GTR being importable to the USA soon. And the mm -hmm. other one was... Um, that's a difficult question, but cars that you perhaps think might be collectible in the future. Mm. Mm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> loaded question. <laughs> that, I, I would have had a good uh, good answer to that one about five years ago because that was like the golden era of buying 90s Euro cars and now it's all gone. Um, okay, so the first question was what? It was um, what's the R33 GTR going to be worth when it's um, yeah. legal for the USA? Uh, it's, it's hard to say. At the moment, they sell for about one point. 1.6 million to 2.2 million um, later model versions like 90 um, 97 98 sell for about four thousand to five thousand dollars more because they're the better version mechanically better and styling wise better um, how much will they be in the US uh, so the R33 is a little bit of a weird car it has a, a worse reputation than you would think if you got a chance to see the car in person and to drive one yourself nobody's going to deny it's one of the best cars that came out in that era but it has to fight with the the fact that the styling was what the Japanese market wasn't expecting when it came out it was bigger and heavier than the 32 and I think the Japanese a lot of people in Japan kind of didn't like it because of that and that has kind of worked its way to the rest of the world understanding that disappointment in it and then taking that and claiming that as being true without actually having your own experience with it. 
Um, I've driven the car myself. I've owned a 33, and I think that they're fantastic cars. And I think the styling is a little bit weird, but I think as more time goes by, the styling starts to feel a little bit better. It's got that whole 90s JDM look, sort of like the DC2 does, or the EK9, or the R33, or the S14 Silvia. Um, I think I think that the car is going to get more popular after than it will right away. There are still a lot of people who poo-poo that car. And so when it's legal, I feel like we'll probably jump in price about 40 to 50%. Now remember the R32s in the first year jumped about 50%. In the second year jumped fr from their original price in the second year they jumped about 100% and then the third year they jumped about 150 to 200%. So they kept like the, the curve kept going up like that, like curving its way up. And I think the R33 is going to have one that goes more steady like that. Like it's going to curve up like that and then go up. Um, they made far fewer R33s. Um, go Fairchuck said 400R, which is uh, the 400 horsepower version of the car that they only made like 50 of. Um, how many do they make of those? 200 of? 50 of? Something? Mm. I, I don't know. Uh, 400 horsepower version of it. It's sweet. And uh, I don't think you'll see too many of those for sale, but right now they sell for over $100,000, and so they're in a completely different market. And I think R33s will follow prices closely with the R32 wherever they are. And there's still going to be a lot of people that want the R32 because it's... The R32, I think, is... If we look 20 years in the future, 30 years in the future, the R32 and the R34 are still going to be the two that people like the most. R32 being the original played a big role in proving Japanese sports cars to the world at the time that it came out. What's the go with radiation? Uh, every car that we buy has to go to the port and be checked for radiation, and it can't be exported if there's radiation on the car. So nothing to worry about there. We've had two cars fail um, in the several thousand cars that we've exported. I wonder how much of the four-door R33 GTR is going to cost. Again, the four-door is um, a, a super rare version of it. At the moment, they don't cost too much more than the regular version because the four-door version of the car has styling that looks really ugly compared to the th uh, um, the two-door. Uh, I mean, I had a four-door. I think the four-doors look cool. It's okay if you think that the four-doors look cool, but the general populace thinks that the four-doors are super ugly. Um, and so the GTR version of them Again, very limited production of them, not very many made. That's going to keep prices up, and probably even more so when they're U.S. legal, because people in the U.S. are there are going to be enough people in the U.S. because of the big population there that want to get that super rare version of it. That we'll probably see the price at least 30 to 50 percent more of an increase than the regular versions of it. Have you ever seen an R32 Skyline with a CA18 engine at auction? Yes, only twice though. A lot of people hear about that version of the car, but they don't actually know that nobody bought them. The CA18 is a four-cylinder, um, 1.8 liter engine that they did make in the R32 Skyline, but production-wise, there are very, very, very few of them. Um, and so we never see them. People ask about them, but I, we've never sold one. It would be really weird to actually see one in person. Do you get any 80 series Land Cruisers? Yeah, but because of the price, not a lot of people buy them. Um, $15,000, $10,000, somewhere in there. Bo Suzuku for me. I know about that. I know about your car. <laughs> the 32 was Godzilla. It won all the races it entered. Yes, there is that, especially in countries like uh, Australia that actually got to see it firsthand. How about New Zealand? What was the 32 like? Because like, nobody in the States or Canada knew about the 32 until Gran Turismo came out. We got, like, all, most of New Zealand's cars were from Japan, and then the Bathurst race in Australia. New Zealanders loved so it as well. So, you're a little bit younger, so you don't probably remember yeah. when they came out, no. but, like, when you were growing up and in high school and first getting into cars, what what was the image of a, a 32? Godzilla. <laughs> yeah, everyone was just like, oh, Godzilla. So, when, I, when I was growing up, nobody knew about the Skyline. If you, like, there's a, like, an American car called the Skyliner, Oh, People would yeah. always say, no, that's a bad car, the Skyliner. Yeah. <laughs> no, but, but we also had like the R32 being, or the R33 being the boat, and everyone liked the R34 and R32. Right. I think the R34 was pop, more popular by far. But. The R34 is, a, is an amazing car, and really, you, it's another of those cars that kind of has quirky looks when you look at them, but 
uh, in pictures, but in person they're very, uh, very muscular looking, very mean looking, and have a good presence. Okay, Johnson Rep. Hey Johnson, how you doing? I haven't heard from you in a while. Can you help broker a car deal when I buy a car in person in Japan? I'm coming there soon. When you come, come uh, hang out on our casting couches. They're pretty awesome. <laughs> That's how I got my job. <laughs> When you came in for the interview, we were like, why did you buy these couches? Do you also do adult videos in here? <laughs> <laughs> we had so many people, like, I posted a video of, like, the the cars, the little Cherokees, right? Yeah. And we had, like, 30 people comment about how they looked like adult video couches. Yeah. We bought them from Ikea, so we actually bought everything in this office from Ikea if we could do that because... I thought it was funny to have an IKEA office, but I don't think anyone else would appreciate the, the joke. <clears throat> okay, I'm looking th through here for some questions or another car to bring up. It's, it's actually been a while since I've done a car, so what do we got? Do you want a cool old Porsche? I do. Uh, 27200 from JAA again. 27200. JAA is a nice auction. I like it. And uh, it's not Porsche, it's Porsche. Yeah, sorry. Okay. Cool black bumper on the back. <laughs> That's actually a RUF replica, or maybe it's an official one, but. Okay. What do we got? Naoko, what's the name of this color of the Porsche? I can't remember. Uh, that's Porsche. Yeah, do you remember? Uh, we had an issue with the Porsche we were trying to sell, and the auction said that it was beige, but it was this color. And we were like, that's not beige. And then it's like, what was it? It has a really it's weird like name. Gray. Yeah, it's like grayish, <laughs> grayish beige metallic or something? Or? Uh, sorry, I can't okay, cool old Porsche. Uh, I'm going to not be negative, so I'm not going to say about the things that I don't like, like the don't put Recaro seats into your Porsche, don't put an aftermarket front bumper on it. The wheels are okay, but uh, unpainted rear bumper. Spoiler, I think that's fine. Uh, carbon fiber hood or fiberglass hood, uh, not really necessary. Clips for the bumper, kind of weird. Um, so I'm not going to be negative about that. Uh, ooh, look at that shifter. This is a really weird car. It kind of looks like somebody used it as a race car. Let's see what the auction sheet says. Do, 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 do. 1978 with a 2.7 liter engine. Hmm, these ones used to be the cheap ones that nobody wanted. But uh, nowadays they're getting more expensive. Still the 964 and the 993 are more expensive than the 2700cc engine ones, I think. But if somebody knows about Porsches better than I do, post that in the chat. 194, 020 kilometers is rather high for Porsche. Most of the Japanese Porsches are More ridiculously days. low in mileage. Motec CPU MSD ignition coil. We used to sell so many of those when I worked in a parts shop in Canada. All the muscle guys wanted their MSD coils. Motec exhaust. Carbon hood. Turbo look rear spoiler. Um, slotted and modified rear bumper. Do you think that somebody just cut that out? The fact that it's black makes it look like it's an unfinished piece of fiberglass or FRP rear bumper made to look like the uh, uh, yellow bird rear bumper from RUF. Recaro seat times two. Uh, what does that say? Personal steering wheel is the brand. These English words written in Japanese can be really hard to read sometimes. For anyone who's reading or learning katakana, they know the struggle. Aftermarket suspension, various other modifications. This is an original Japan car, left-hand drive, aftermarket wheels. It's an old car, so make sure that you check yourself because you're gonna cry if you don't. A lot of people say that. Uh, the meaning of this basically is um, the seller wants you to see it yourself because some old cars are in bad condition and some are in good and he thinks that they're in good condition. That's the takeaway that I get from it, but I'm not really sure. 
it's like it says old old car see in person for more information or for details engine check lamp is on uh, see the car I don't know why they're saying that engine doesn't work properly idling is uh, uneven or can't can't idle correctly oil leak AC belt has been removed trunk floor bent and modified uh, front marker lens cracked left door can't open from the inside handle dashboard glue marks headliner is uh, deformed in various areas interior panel I can't read that I'm sorry uh, some parts are coming off good thing about cars when you drive the car parts fall off of it it's like does anyone know Richard Scarry? He makes like children's books, right? Whenever he has a broken car, there's always like little parts falling off of it, like uh, bolts and stuff. That's what I'm thinking about. Parts come off of this car. Uh, underside scratched and dented, aftermarket wheels um, scratched, various scratches um, on the car, and then some damage to the paint. So it doesn't look like it's in the best of condition. It's heavily modified and uh, yeah, price wise, uh, Mm, 1.8 million yen which is relatively cheap for a Porsche 911 but it's not the one that the Porsche people want most people who buy a 911 especially a classic one they want one that's in close to original condition or maybe just wheels suspension exhaust they don't want changes to the body and aftermarket parts and broken engine oh I forgot about the broken engine yeah that's gonna make it even cheaper Hmm, maybe 1.5 million, so $14,000, 13000 somewhere in there. Okay, we're going to have to wrap it up there. We're six minutes late, so I'm sorry. There's nothing scary. Why did you call it Richard Scary? There's nothing scary about it. His name was Richard Scary, and uh, he did the... Um, the author of the book was his wife, and then he did the illustrations for it. Okay, gonna end it. Yes, happy Canada Day. Right, it is Canada Day in Canada right now, which is kind of like the 4th of July, but happens before the people in the U.S. get theirs and everybody runs around uh, with Canadian flags and things, including me when I was younger. Um, Canada Day here was two days ago, I guess, because we're a day ahead. So Canada Day was yesterday for you guys, or today? Yeah, it's today. So Canada Day was yesterday. Um, so yeah, happy Canada Day to you Canadians. Happy almost 4th of July to you Americans because I won't see you again until next week. Um, and yeah, peace to you all. You get peace. Okay, switch off.